the D-backs were able to finish June strong with a big series win over the Oakland A's. But will it get more difficult as we enter the month of July? You are a Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You're listening to who? The always charismatic host of this podcast, Miller Thomas. I'm a multimedia journalist and I'm a graphic designer, so please go check out my website, millerthomas24.myportfolio.com. On there, you can see all my latest work from my packages to my articles to my photos and my graphic design. Today's episode is brought to you by Tax Network USA. Did you know that it's never too late to resolve your tax issues with the IRS? Don't wait. Reduce your tax debt and get help from a team of licensed tax professionals. Call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on. On today's Locked On Dimebacks podcast, we'll talk about the D-backs finishing the month strong with that series victory over the Oakland A's. We'll talk about the good and bad from the month, and then we'll take a look ahead to the month of July and we'll, of course, end the podcast with our little panic meter that we do for every Sunday, Monday podcast. So a whole lot to talk to you guys about. Thank you for making Locked on Dimebacks your first listen every day. I would not be able to do this podcast without you, my loyal listeners, sharing, subscribing, reviewing, doing all that so I could do this podcast for you. Thank you. It's free. It's available on all platforms. So please continue to tell your friends. And one of those platforms is YouTube. Please subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. Our goal is to hit 2,000 subs by the All-Star break, and the All-Star break is a couple weeks away. So need you guys to hit that subscribe button a little bit more for us to hit our goal. And hopefully we can hit that. So please hit subscribe to Locked on Dimebacks on YouTube. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. And let's talk about this series against the A's and how the D-backs were able to finish the month strong because you saw that game one against the A's and it did not leave a lot of confidence for the D-backs because they were molly whopped in that game one against Oakland. Terrible pitching by the D-back staff. Really set us up for bad vibes for the last two games, right? Because you're like, okay, if you lose game one, you have to go out there and win game two. Now game two is such a desperate game for the D-backs. I was talking on the podcast how the D-backs really needed a sweep of the Oakland A's, and instead they crapped the bed in game number one. But thankfully, they were able to make up for it with back-to-back wins in the last two games. And the D-backs did a lot of good things in the last two games. In the most recent game, the finale, the D-backs had really good pitching and some clutch late-game offense. And then game number two, great pitching overall because we saw the return of Zach Gallen in game number two. I think he inspired a lot of confidence going forward because it took Gallen no time to come back and look nasty. The change-up was change-upping. The fastball was fastballing. Like His velo was there. I think he threw the hardest pitch of his career. Uh, if I remember that correctly, Saturday, like the velocity, he was consistently hitting 96, 97 on the radar gun. He was hitting the outside zone really effectively, I thought, with that fastball to right-handed hitters. I thought the changeup had great break on it. Like in terms of the effectiveness, the effectiveness of Zach Allen's pitches in game number one uh, in his first game back off the injured list, I thought Zach Allen looked fantastic. Now, is he going against the most vaunted lineup of all time? Is he going against the Braves or the New York Yankees? No, he's not. The Oakland A's, their best position player is either Brent Rooker or Miguel Andujar, which is not saying a lot. I really like Brent Rooker. He's having a fantastic season. Miguel Andujar should not be arguably your best player. The lineup was not very good that Zach Gallon was going against. But still, first start back off the injured list, knowing you got a hard pitch count. Six innings, 77 pitches, seven strikeouts. I thought Zach Allen was masterful in game number two. And then game number three, Bren Fott was also fantastic. He was able to avoid the big blow-up inning that usually costs him where he gives up. Usually it's like two outs in the sixth or seventh. And then all of a sudden, whoa, he walks a batter. Then he gives up a hit. And then all of a sudden, up oh, three-run shot. The opposing team just took the lead. 
None of that in the series finale. Brendan Fott was mowing down hitters, five hits total, eight strikeouts through six innings, and only threw 82 pitches. Great job by Toy Lavello to not let Brendan Fott go out there for another inning and throw more pitches because that's usually where we run into trouble for Brendan Fott. Mantiply, Thompson, Seawald, the trio came in and shut it down after that. D-backs also great in the clutch in that series finale late in the game. Blaze Alexander was able to stroll up to the plate and come through in a big clutch situation. We know Blaze Alexander has been struggling recently over the last couple of weeks, but came through in a big way in the series finale. I believe the bases were loaded and they even intentionally walked Ketel Marte to get to Blaze Alexander, who ended up coming through for the D-backs. Big single, score two. Great job by Blaze. Great job by the D-backs in the last two games of the series to finish the month of June strong. And now when you go back and look at it, the D-backs, 16-11 and 11 in the month of June. Very good stuff by this D-backs team this month. They were able to make up some games, maybe in the wild card race. I mean, they're still like two and a half games, two games back in the wild card race, but they were at least... From the eye test perception wise, this D-backs team looked much improved in the month of June. Their offense way better this month, and it was even close. The D-backs, when you look at the month of June, the D-backs offensively, one of the best teams in the National League. They ended the month. I think they're going to finish fourth in the NL and run scored for the month of June behind the Mets, Padres, Dodgers. And then also D-backs fourth in OPS in the month of June behind Mets, Dodgers, Padres. D-backs third in average in the month of June. They just did so many good things this month. A lot of guys were able to start picking it up again and starting to produce more at the plate. We got some good uh, relievers, too, that have been picking it up in the month of June. Some of the bullpen guys have started to turn a corner as well. I think there's a handful of dudes now that we can at least trust in the pen. When you go back and look at the schedule for the D-backs in the month of June, they were able to handle their business against most of the opponents that we discuss. Really, the twin series is the only series where I'm like, the D-backs should have won that series. That's the only series where I feel like the D-backs really just kind of let it get away from them, and I thought if they won that twin series, then we would have felt amazing with the D-backs leaving in the month of June. I think we should still feel really good about them, but I think if you win that twin series, an opponent that's above 500, one of the better teams in the American League, I think it really validates the month because still the only teams above 500 that you beat in the month of June, take a look at it, none. The D-backs did not beat any teams above 500 in the month of June, and Beating the Minnesota Twins uh, would have been a nice little feather in the D-backs cap to really prove to them that, hey, they are getting better. They don't just beat up on the bad teams. They're also beating up on the good teams as well. But unfortunately, that didn't happen in the month of June. They were able to finish strong, handle their business. And when you look at the series, the D-backs won the series that they should have won. They beat the Angels. They beat the White Sox. They beat the Nats. They beat the A's. The series with the opponents that are probably on their level, the Padres, the Giants, or excuse me, the Padres Mets, they tied those series. They did beat the San Francisco Giants, which was nice as well. They're a below 500 team, but nice to see the D-backs win all their series against the below 500 teams. They tie the series with the teams on their level and the teams that are better than them, the Phillies and the Twins, they lost those two series. And for the D-backs to really take advantage in the month of July. They're going to have to win the series against some of the best teams in Major League Baseball because their schedule to start July entering the All-Star break is tough, and we'll talk about their July schedule and what the D-backs need to do to win some games that month in segment number three. And if you want to bet on the D-backs winning their upcoming series against the L.A. Dodgers, then the best place you want to go to place a little wager down is, of course, going to be FanDuel. I'm still looking for my, where is my, oh, here it is, my little FanDuel, little video overlay for my YouTube audience. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel 
lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. My favorite thing to do on FanDuel is the same game parlay. Whenever the D-backs are playing, give me the over on Marte total bases. If it's a Brandon Fott day, give me the over on strikeouts and give me the D-backs money line. It doesn't always hit, but when it does, it brings a big smile to my face. And if you want to see a big smile on your face, head over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports band partner of Major League Baseball. And also, if you haven't filed your taxes yet, it's not too late. Here on Locked on Dimebacks, we pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for your team, whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the playoffs. It's year-round. You know what else is year-round? Collection season. Just because tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after you for unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, and even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax experts at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA has saved their clients over $1 billion in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash locked on and be sure to mention locked on dimebacks at checkout and you'll receive a $250 discount off their services. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked on Dimebacks podcast. Now let's talk about the good and the bad from the month of June. We talked about how the D backs finished the month strong, but let's get into some more nuanced stuff with how they did in the month of June because the first thing that I want to talk about which is positive, Lords Guriel had himself a month. And Guriel, I, I think it's finally time to say he's back. Guriel crushed it in the month of June, entering the finale against the Oakland A's because he went 0 for 3, so these stats do not account what he did the fina- in the finale. But entering the finale against the Oakland A's, Lords Guriel in the month of June, his slash line, 337 average, 907 OPS, Five home runs, and he was third on the team with 17, excuse me, RBIs. Guriel looks like he's back. He looks like the dude that we saw at the beginning of the season. And honestly, it's kind of crazy. When you look at Lord Guriel's stats right now, they're kind of getting close to where he normally is. He's got 267 average, which is actually higher than a Christian Walker, which is, you know, not as high as a Jake McCarthy, but... All of a sudden, Lourdes Gurriel's like back to, back to being like fourth on the team in terms of batting average behind a jock, a Keto Marte, and a Randall Gritchick. It's Lourdes Gurriel right there after having such a bad month of May where he was literally awful the entire month of May. And even uh, April, after the first like two and a half weeks, he really started to fall off. But in the month of June, Lourdes Gurriel, the swing has been there. Uh, he still probably grounds into too many double plays, but a lot more hard contact, a lot more line drives, a lot more power overall. Clutchness, too. It feels like Lord DeGrio has been coming through in the clutch for the D-back. So even though he struggled in the month of May, 213 average, 532 OPS in the month of May, he came through in a big way in the month of June, and we want to see if he can keep it going for July. Bad. Eugenio Suarez, he continues to be not a very productive player at all. He had the third worst OPS in the month of June on the Z-backs team ahead of Jose Herrera and Tucker Barnhart, two guys who don't play much. And Jose Herrera is only playing because Gabby Moreno's hurt. Tucker Barnhart, I mean, Barnhart, the numbers aren't good, but at least we know he gets RBI singles. Like he had that, what, streak of like four or five straight games with an RBI single. At least Tucker Barnhart is clutch. Overall, the slash line might not be good, but I do feel like Barnhart is at least clutch. Eugenio Suarez, does nothing. Barnhart had five RBIs in the month of June in 32 at-bats. Eugenio Suarez had six RBIs in 77 at-bats. It makes no sense why Eugenio Suarez continues to play so much for the D-backs. He had a 156 average. He was 12 for 77 in the month of June. We're playing way too much Eugenio. 
Kevin Newman in the month of June batted 356. Why is he not playing over Eugenio Suarez at third base? It makes no sense. Geraldo Perdomo in the month of June batted 271. He's been fine at the bottom of the lineup, and we know he plays solid defense as well. There are so many better options for the D-backs than a Eugenio Suarez. I know Blaze Alexander hasn't been good. Fourth worst OPS in the month of June. Still, at least a 254 average in the month of June. 15 for 59. Like, everybody who can play third is just a way better contributor than Eugenio Suarez, who plays solid defense, but the defense does not make up for the lack of contributions from the bat. And Eugenio Suarez, with roster moves on the horizon, I, I think he should be the guy uh, to potentially get that DFA because it has not looked good with Eugenio Suarez in the D-backs lineup for the month of June. It has not looked good with Eugenio Suarez for a while now in the D-backs lineup. Let's get back to positive. Kevin Ginkle feels like he's starting to turn a corner. He was really good in the month of June. 12 innings, one earned run for Ginkle, .83 whip and a 186 average allowed. We know when Ginkle's right how important he is to this D-backs team. He was the go-to setup man for the D-backs last year. He carried us in the postseason. Him and Seawald were nails. Ginkle didn't give up one earned run in the entire postseason last year. So important to what the D-backs did the whole regular season last year. And he had a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations entering this year with what he did last year, plus the fact that Paul Seawald started the year on the injured list, a lot of expectations for Gingle to carry the bullpen. He was not able to do that to start the year, but now, a couple months later, it feels like Gingle is finding his drive, <laughs> his drive, finding his stride, finding his groove. I tried to say groove and stride, and it came out as drive. He finally is finding his footing and getting better, and he's turning a corner, and Kevin Ginkle is looking like a much improved player than what we saw at the beginning of the season. And if we're getting this Ginkle with what we've gotten this month from the Seawalds, the Martinez's, the Thompson's, the Mansplies, even the Jarvis's have been fine, that's five, six relievers you feel decent to really great about. And now the D-backs have at least a decent bullpen going. Is it? The best bullpen, no, but I think the bullpen is good enough. The McGuffs of the world, the Vieras of the world still aren't that good. I still think there's at least five, six guys that you feel good about in the D-backs pen right now, and Kevin Ginkle is one of the dudes leading the charge. Back to, neg <clears throat> back to negative, Jordan Montgomery had himself a terrible month in June, and there were so many instances where we really needed Monty to step up. There was a big situation, either finale where we needed him to win, or maybe set the tone in a game number one. And Monty repeatedly was not able to do it for the D-backs. 15 earned runs and just 21.1 innings pitch, a 333 average allowed, a 1.83 whip. Ginkle had a .83 whip. Monty, 1.83 whip. Literally one whip, one point, one whip point higher than Ginkle. Is that how you say that? Not too sure. Bottom line, Monty, bad in the month of June, 633 ERA. And for a guy who's getting paid a lot of money, the most money on this D-backs team, we've really needed him to come through in a bunch of situations, and he just hasn't been good enough for the D-backs this year. It's been very disappointing. Then the final thing, good, positive. The Ketel Marte all-star case, he was fantastic. Multiple go-ahead hits that clutched it out for the D-backs that led to wins. Multiple times getting the scoring started for the D-backs in the first inning in the month of June. Ketel Marte batted 341 with over 1,000 OPS in the month of June. He led the D-backs in home runs with seven home runs in the month of June. He led the D-backs in RBIs in the month of June. He led the D-backs in walks in the month of June. Ketel Marte right now is playing the best second base in Major League Baseball. Offensively, defensively, he's the best at his position right now. I don't think it's even close to the National League, and Ketel Marte will definitely be starting the All-Star game come July 15th. And now we'll talk about what the D-backs need to do to continue piling up the victories as we get close to the All-Star break. We'll talk about that in segment number three. But let me tell you guys about the number one fantasy sports app in America that I like to use. It's called Prize Picks because with over 5 million active members, it is the best. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, 
on prize picks. It's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stats projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks and can turn ten dollars into one thousand dollars. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, all right, all right. Let's get back into the Locked On Diamondbacks podcast. And let's do the panic meter for the D-backs as we like to do for the first podcast every week. We had the meter last week at a number five. And for me right now, as we leave the month of June, what should the D-backs panic meter be at? I think five is still respectable. Neutral, D-backs can go in either direction because like as we always see, you look at the standings, D-backs two games below 500, still mediocre team. But they're two and a half games back of a wild card, still within pace. And I still like the D-backs better than a team like the New York Mets who are playing, yes, maybe the best baseball in the National League. I still don't believe in this Mets team, and I think it will fall off. I don't care. The St. Louis Cardinals, uh, I don't love that team. I think the D-backs are better than that team on paper as well. I still think the D-backs are going to be able to jump these teams ahead of them. Um. And to do that, they're going to have to pick it up in the month of July where their schedule gets a little bit tougher. That's why it's neutral out of five because they had themselves a very good month. They handled their business. They beat up on all the bad teams in the month of June, 16 and 11 in the month of June. They did their job. But entering the month of July, the schedule not looking that easy. And that's why it feels like the D-backs are still in a place where they could go either direction, either spiral in this wild card race or climb and rise above, you know, some of these mediocre teams. You got Zach Allen back. That's going to help your rotation. He looked fantastic. Game number one, Brandon fought, I think is only going to get better as the season progresses. Hopefully Monty continues to get better. We're still probably a month away, if not more from Merrill Kelly or Erod returning, but Alec Thomas might not be that far away. And with his return, Maybe it signals a Eugenio Suarez DFA or him being sent somewhere else. When you look at the upcoming schedule for the D-backs in the month of July, it's not going to be easy, and this is going to be one of the biggest make-or-break stretches for the D-backs for the rest of the season, and I don't think that's hyperbolic at all because they got themselves a gauntlet before the All-Star break. This is the next two weeks. This is potentially going to make or break the D-back season, whether they could keep pace in the wild card race or if they're going to fall out, you know, unceremon- unceremoniously. That's why they really needed that series sweep over the Oakland A's because starting July 2nd, you go against the LA Dodgers where maybe it's actually the best time to face the Dodgers because right now they are vulnerable. Right now they are dealing with injuries to both their lineup and their rotation. Mookie Betts, he's down right now. Max Muncy, he's down right now. Yamamoto, Bueller, those guys are down right now. Some big stars in that D-backs, excuse me, in that Dodgers rotation lineup are not going to be there right now. So maybe it's the best time to face the LA Dodgers when they're at their weakest. Then you got the Padres after that, which again, could be the best time to face the Padres with Tatis currently on the injured list. Musgrove just got moved to the 60 day could be the most vulnerable time to catch both the Dodgers and the Padres uh, at this point of your schedule. You got the Braves after that, which is not going to be easy. Obviously, they don't have Ronald Acuna anymore, who we saw that first matchup. But still, even without Acuna, they are still so loaded. Marcelo Zuna having himself an MVP season. And maybe the other guys aren't living up to expectations, but you're still scared when you see Olsen, Albies, Riley, Arcia, like any of those guys strut up to the plate, you're still kind of scared. Jared Kalenic's actually having a pretty good season. And then Chris Sale out of nowhere, after being down bad the last few years with his health, he's bounced back in a big way and has been elite this season for the Atlanta Braves. So that series isn't going to be easy. And then the final series before the All-Star break, you go against the Toronto Blue Jays, who are a good competitive team. Are they elite? 
No, they are seven games below 500. They are seven and a half games back in the wild card race. They're having themselves kind of a disappointing season, but still a lot of talent on that Blue Jays team where it's very easy going against a squad who you don't see often. That's a very easy trap series for the D-backs. Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, a little Dalton Varsho action who is not having a great season, but we still have a lot of respect for Dalton Varsho. George Springer, Justin Turner, yes, they're not having the greatest seasons, but still very talented guys. The rotation, still a lot of talent, even though not everyone is living up to their billing. Jose Barrios, Barrios, Chris Bassett, Kevin Gosman, like they still have so much talent, despite the talent not living up to expectations this year. Still a lot of talent overall. So for the D-backs, entering that all-star break, it's not going to be easy. The D-backs can... Let's see how many games is that. Three against the Dodgers. Sit, now three against the Padres at six. Three against the Braves. That's nine. Oh, no. Four against the Braves. That's 10. And then three more against the Blue Jays. That's 13. The D-backs can go like, what, seven and six during that stretch. Would you feel good about that? I probably would feel good about that. If the D-backs can be 500. This is barely above 500. Just go seven and six over the next two weeks as we enter the All-Star break and just keep pace in the wild card. I think that would be perfect. Perfect for the D-backs. It's such a tough stretch in the month of July. But the D-backs are starting to play better. Their offense is finally starting to click. Corbin Carroll in the month of June, still not elite, but the numbers way better than where they've been the last couple months. Around 250 average, over 700 OPS. He's starting to come around. Lords Guriel woke up in the month of June. Ketel Marte carrying the offense. If the bullpen continues to pitch better as the rotation gets healthier with Zach Gallen, maybe Alec Thomas you know, is a little spark infusion to this lineup. The D-backs potentially could handle themselves very nicely over the next couple of weeks and just do enough. Just finish 7-6 over the next couple of weeks against some of these really good teams in Major League Baseball. If they could do that and turn the All-Star break, I love this D-backs team to go on a run in the second half of the season because after the All-Star break, Cubs, Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Washington, those are, that's how you end of the month of July. Those are your first four series and the last four series. That, that's the rest of the series for the month of July. Cubs, Royals, Pirates, Nationals. Very nice stretch after the All-Star break. And even if you look ahead to August, you start with the Pirates again. You play the Pirates two out of three times. And then you play the Guardians. Then the Phillies are tough. But then you play the Rockies and you play the Marlins in the month uh, of August. You play the New York Mets again. Like Once you get through this two-week gauntlet, the rest of July and even August doesn't look that bad. Looks very manageable. Even, I mean, I'm looking ahead pretty far. Honestly, I think this is the toughest stretch of the D-backs season schedule is these next two weeks. And if the D-backs can handle themselves over the next couple weeks, I think they'll be fine for the rest of the regular season. Now, that's it for this edition of the Lockdown Dimebacks podcast. Come back tomorrow. More Dimebacks news coverage at Insight. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. Doses.